London main market and Australia-listed Resolute Mining is an Africa-focused gold miner with uh, three decades of experience across exploration, development and gold production with its two mines, one in Senegal and one in Mali. It's recently published its fifth consecutive quarter of incremental production growth as well. The chief executive is Terry Houlihan, who joins us now in the studio. Terry, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, what is it you're offering to prospective investors in, in Resolute Mining? I think it's growth. I think if you look at where we've been the last couple of years, from 2019 we took our main flagship operation, Sayama Underground. We got through a few technical difficulties and at this point in time, this last year, we actually produced over design, over the original design of the plant and the mine. And we're now in a position to grow that and bring our unit costs down. I want to talk more about costs in just a minute because I know that's one of the headlines we've got to talk about because I know you've beaten uh, a lot of the cost projections, which is good news. But I want to talk about this fifth consecutive quarter of production growth. We were into the sixth quarter now. Is that looking as though that could add to that tally? It's going well. Really? It's going well. Why? What is it that's happening which is giving you this upward trajectory? I think it's all about the modelling of the process. Um, when, about 18 months ago when we started, our models on the underground and on the open pit mining were not good. So we actually slowed down the operations um, early last year and did a lot more grade control. So better definition, better resolution of what's in the ground in terms of underground and surface. So now we're speaking with far greater confidence on the grades we're getting. Our, all our grades across the board are climbing now because we're mining more efficiently because we've got better resolution on, on the metal in the ground. And of course those efficiencies bring out this, what I've just said about the costs and the, the fact your uh, cost guidance has been beaten as well. To what degree and is that something that can continue as you develop and produce more and get a better way of getting it out of the ground or is there a sort of a peaking of the cost uh, curve do you think? No, no, we, we, we still think there's a lot of room on cost essentially. If you look at where we've been the last 18 months, we've been really focused on the revenue side of the equation, physicals, getting the, getting the mining correct, getting the plant correct and not really focusing too much on cost not because we don't want to, it's just when you've got a, your general manager out in the field 12 hours a day trying to fix the, the tonnage, it tends to get pushed to one side. But we put initiatives in place in Q3 last year and we're just starting to see the, the, the cost reductions coming through in the operations. So I think we're going to beat our guidance this year on, on cost. Mm. You raised money at the back end of last year, didn't you? Yes, we did. $105 million. Dollars, That's right. I believe. Uh, what was the point of that and has it changed the balance sheet dynamic at all? It has. We had a, a pretty ugly balance sheet at the end of last year and we were in a bit of a corner. Uh, we raised that equity really to flatten our, our debt. We had some debts outstanding back from 2019. And um, what it's done is it's strengthened the balance sheet. We've also brought in some tier one investors from North America who are in there for the long game. So now our investor, our fund manager investments are down to about 55% of our, our share register, which is quite significant. But they're very supportive and, and as I say, they're in there for the long term. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about your exploration because it's not just about mining the material which of course brings in the money but the exploration looks exciting as well. I think you've just announced a 58% increase haven't you um, in the resource size at the uh, Sayama uh, North That's correct. Uh, project. That's correct, That's correct isn't it? So how's this, how, what was this unexpected or is this something you've been working towards with a fair idea it was going to happen? We ha because of all the problems we've had, we haven't done a lot of exploration at Siyama. Mm. Now, Siyama is a big 85 kilometre strike and it has not been very well explored over the 40 years that we, people have known about it for mm. various reasons. So we went back to basics and we just started drilling very close to the metallurgical complex and within four to ten kilometres we found this huge deposit we were already scratching the surface with it with small oxide deposits on top, so the equipment is already on top of it. Um, but it, in a short space of time, we found three million ounces, which was a surprise to us. Um, as we were going along, we thought maybe it'll get to two million, but we were surprised it's actually three million ounces, and we're still drilling. Mm. It's closed on strike, but it's still open at depth. And because of the thickness of the material, we believe we'll be able to mine down to 200, maybe even 220 metres. So it's quite exciting for us. Mm. And what's the next stage for that project then, now having established this extra um, tonnage that you've got on the books? We're in pre-feasibility study. That study will be coming out early in, in Q2 this year, and that'll show us the best options 
um, of how to tackle this because suddenly we're going to have a lot of mining material and that'll bring us back to what is the best way of sweating our asset further and with minimal capital. capital. We're not looking for huge amounts of capital. We're going to um, do the expansions out of working costs this year, as out of free cash flow. Right. So we're not looking to go back for more money. Um, we're really going to make those assets sweat, and we're really excited about that. Yeah. Talk to me about sustainability. We're talking increasingly about this um, with, with chief executives a across a number of different sectors. Um, how much of a part does it play, and how much of your day is spent looking at sustainability of the asset. I mean, you've got to acknowledge that the workforce needs looking after, um, which of course is the right thing for companies these days. Yes. Um, what are you doing in that regard? Remember, we're a, th a company with 30 years experience. Mm -hmm. And we, we started a lot of those things a long time ago. Yeah. So I think we had a head start with it. We also picked up an operation at Sayama, for example, from BHP, originally started that mine, and then Rangold took it over. So we think we're ahead of the game in terms of, of our ESG. And we're not the only one. Moody's auditors as last year and said we are ahead of the game. We also subscribe to the World Gold Council, the RGMPs, mm -hmm. and we're on track to get 100% this, this year in June, as the rest of the group are. So if and if you stop and think about it and look at bottom lines, in terms of safety, Sayama has just celebrated four years without a lost time incident, which for the complexity of that operation is quite a key step. And we've, we're totally in, in engagement with our, all our communities. We are in the position of educating them, given that we've provided water over the years, we've provided uh, electricity, we've got schools, clinics, etc. So now we're really focusing on the educational side and taking people right through to scholarships. Mm. Okay, uh, let's look at the share price. Um, yes. Something that we've, we've, got, to, we've got to talk about. Um, as I said, you know, your assets are, are in uh, Mali and, and Senegal. I mean, th there is presumably some sort of political risk of what's going on here. Um, what's happening with the share price? I mean, you, you're talking about, you know, you're into your, what you believe to be the sixth consecutive amount of growth, you've got your costs under control, uh, things seem to be working really nicely at the moment. What is it that's seeing the share price down at these levels, which I think now takes your market cap to about half a billion, doesn't Correct. it, sterling, if you measure it against your London share price, which is what this is. Um, what's being priced in here, or what's not being priced in? I think um, we lost a lot of the market sentiment over these last two or three years because we were over-promising and under-delivering. Technically, we were battling with the underground mine and the processing plant at Siama, and that is really about over 50% of our operation. Mm -hmm. Those have been fixed. Um, we've had a lot of change of management. Um, we've got a new team in place. We've, I've parachuted in quite a few key people, experts in the field, people at tops of the games, and now we're really starting to make the operation uh, work well. Costs, I'm not yet happy with the costs, as I mentioned earlier, we've still got a lot of work to do there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still in the fourth quarter. I think over time we can get down to the third quarter. Um, I don't think people are pricing that in, but they have turned a little bit. I think people are starting to believe us, al although at the same time the gold price has climbed. So how much is dependent on gold price, how much is dependent on our performance? I think people are waiting to see the pre-feasibility study. Um, they're waiting to see our, our ore reserves, our new ore reserves for last year that come out within 10 days now. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting to see, um, I'd say, the pre-feasibility and the six to eight quarters of systematic growth. Mm -hmm. That, in my experience, is always key to a lot of people in the market. Mm. So, rest of 2023, we've spoken about this uh, sixth quarter now, you're th mm -hmm. thinking things looking good for Q1 of 2023. How about the rest of this year? Rest of this year, at the, I think with the Sayama North, uh, it's unlikely, but it's a possibility we could start bringing some of that material into the operation. We will be looking, and uh, we are already expanding our crushing stages um, on the on the front end of the plant. We're focusing on the mills to debottleneck those more. We're predicting, um, whereas the sulphide plant last year had, um, treated 2.1 million tonnes, that was its nameplate capacity. Uh, this year we're expecting 2.35 and we're at those levels now. It's a significant step up, especially given the grades have come up over the last two years from underground from 2.4 to over 2.7, given that the design was 2.6. So we're really starting to get everything, all our ducks in a row. And as I say, we focus on cost, we want to bring that down, sort of knocking on the door of third quartile by the end of this year, and being able to predict where we're going to go with the growth 
for the next three, three to five years. We look forward to hearing more about that when it happens. But Terry, in the meantime, thanks for joining us. Super, thank you very much for your time. Terry Houlihan is the Chief Executive of Resolute Mining.